All right, we're going to start the endocrine system lecture here. All right, the endocrine system, uh, anything that's going to be producing hormones uh, <clears throat> and all their tissues and glands that are involved in this are as part of the endocrine system. And what hormones are then are chemical messengers uh, that are going to elicit a response, some kind of reaction uh, from an organ not next to it, so it's going to be farther away. Um, a good example of that one is uh, uh, adrenaline is secreted from the adrenal glands, uh, which are located um, superior to the kidneys, and they affect the heart, the lungs, uh, muscles, major muscles. <clears throat> and so that's just an example. It's secreted in one place and affects something somewhere else. Um, we have three types of stimuli. You got your endocrine stimuli, yeah, your humoral, and this is um, based on the uh, ions in your system. So let's say, I'll give you the example on a PowerPoint here of calcium. If your calcium levels are low, then you're going to secrete parathyroid hormone to remove some calcium from your bones to increase the level in your body. Into, uh, into your blood system. Excuse me, that's one example. Salt, uh, sodium is another one. Uh, if your uh, sodium level is too low, you're going to, uh, your kidneys are going to, uh, your brain is going to, your pituitary is going to release the chemicals going to affect the kidneys and have them, uh, kidneys stop releasing uh, sodium, so they'll retain sodium. So those are a couple of, for the humoral stimuli, it's about the fluid levels. Uh, then you have your neural stimuli, come back to the, uh, the brain here. I said, when I said brain, then I correct myself to um, pituitary. So it's the uh, neural, the nervous system is going to be affecting the, like the adrenal gland, causing it to do something, or again, like the, the uh, um, hypothalamus uh, affects the pituitary, the posterior pituitary, which again affects the kidneys and so forth. So that's neural. Then you got your hormonal stimuli, and um, these are ones that again secrete a hormone that is going to be released and affect something somewhere else. Insulin would be a good example of this. Insulin is a hormone released from the pancreas, and it's going to affect all your tissues, but the uh, for their uh, salt, uh, not salt, the sugar in uptake. <clears throat> so those are a couple of examples, or a few examples. All right, now types of hormones. Uh, two main classes of them here. The one is uh, steroid-based hormones, and these are based off of a cholesterol molecule, okay? These, can, these are dissolved in fat, so they're liquid soluble. These will diffuse across the plasma membrane and go to the, the nucleus for uh, affecting these. And again, these are long-term physiological responses. Good example of this is, um, testosterone or estrogen, those are long-term hormones. Uh, then you have uh, amino acids, amino acid base. These can be small ones where, where it's just one amino acid or it can be a small, or it can be a chain of amino acids we call, a chain of amino acids we call proteins. These are water soluble, so are, these are dissolved in uh, water. And because they are water soluble, we eliminate these in our urine. And let's go back up to the steroid ones, the ones that are uh, lipid soluble, they end up being stored in our fats. So they don't, we don't eliminate them as quickly, hence that's why uh, they have a long-term effect. Let's come back down to the amino acid ones. Um, they will bind to the receptors on the outside of the plasma membrane. And again, because these are water soluble, these get removed from our system uh, in, our, during, in our urinary system more quickly. Uh, here's just some examples on uh, chapter 16 uh, chart in there. Uh, gives you some lipid solubles, uh, lipid soluble hormones. So these are your uh, cholesterol ones, and over here your uh, amino ones. These are the amino acid ones. These are all the major organs of the uh, excuse me, the endocrine system. <clears throat> Now the pineal gland is a small gland back inside the head uh, in the brain. So a lot of times it's uh, 
if you were to look in the nervous system, you're going to find it there just because it's located in the brain, but it does a lot of um, <clears throat> hormonal endocrine stuff, so it's also part of this system. And you have your hypothalamus, which communicates with your pituitary, you have your thyroid gland, your parathyroid gland, your thymus, which is also part of your immune system, you have your adrenal glands, your pancreas, then you have your gonads. Those are the main uh, uh, endocrine organs. So the pineal gland, let's go back to that one. This one is part of your, kind of regulates your cycles, uh, your daytime, uh, your sleeping and the wake rhythms. And it does change just like as the days get longer in the summertime, it, it changes and the days get shorter in the wintertime, so it's going to change. Uh, these also go, to go with uh, monthly cycles, like menstrual cycles for women, because uh, it's not just the 24 hours, also a, a month long cycle. Uh, it secretes melatonin. Uh, this is, uh, affects mood disorders, uh, moods of people. And, and again, it, there are, it can have. Uh, an effect, it is associated, like it says, with mood disorders because of levels of melatonin. <clears throat> Your hypothalamus is uh, part of the brain. Uh, it sits below this round thing right here is your thalamus and the hypothalamus sits right below it because hypo means below. So it's below the thalamus and it's the main part of the brain that communicates with the endocrine system. The endocrine system, uh, pituitary gland, gland is called is nicknamed the master gland. It is kind of like the, the main one that, uh, that regulates the endocrine system. And the hypothalamus communicates with it. Now the pituitary gland has two portions, the posterior and the anterior. Uh, the posterior releases two separate hormones and the anterior over here has six different hormones. We're gonna go through those in a moment here. So again, the pituitary, and it sits kind of right between your eyes, the pituitary does. If you remember back with the skull, the inside of the skull, the cella tercica, that turkey saddle thing, that's where the pituitary gland sits. And if you if you figure your brain's, that uh, your fist is the brain, the pituitary kind of sits right there below it, and uh, your thumb would be the part that connects with the brain, the hypothalamus. All right, so the hormones for the posterior pituitary, Two main hormones are oxytocin and then antidiuretic hormone. Oxytocin is a positive feedback hormone. There's not a lot of them. Uh, this happens to be one of them. Uh, this is mainly during childbirth. Uh, when a female has contractions, so the muscles are, the uterus is starting to contract, it kind of squeezes the baby and tries to push the baby out of the birth canal. Well, it pushes the baby against the cervix. And having that pressure on the cervix sends a signal up to the brain telling it basically the pituitary to release oxytocin. Well, oxytocin goes in and tells the uterus to contract, which puts pressure on the cervix, which goes back and signals the brain to release more oxytocin. So that's what a positive feedback system is. All right, so that's what that antidiuretic hormone is secreted again by the posterior pituitary gland. This one is <clears throat> for uh, controlling your uh, fluid levels in your body. If you are getting dehydrated, in other words, your, your water level is going low in your body, your body will release the antidiuretic. Yeah, the antidiuretic hormone, which is going to tell the kidneys to not excrete as much fluid, as much urine. So it's going to hold the water back. And if you, so if you're low on water, you're going to have an increase in ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. If you're drinking lots of water then, then your antidiuretic hormone is gonna go down. So then you don't need to retain water, you actually need to get rid of it. So that is an example of a negative feedback hormone. <clears throat> but these are the only two hormones that are secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland. Uh, first one we'll talk about is the growth hormone. Growth hormone really peaks in, uh, in your teens and early 20s, especially for men, uh, muscles, bones, uh, liver, uh, I mean, all children up until uh, everybody, you stop growing, you're producing lots of growth hormone. We have a few more because there's six of these total. So growth hormone is one of them. You have your thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, which is gonna be, is, again, stimulating your thyroid. Uh, you got your, uh, your 
uh, adrenal corticotropic hormones are going to affect your adrenal glands. Uh, so that's three of them. And the next three, the follicular follicle stimulating hormone, the luteinizing hormone, and the prolactin hormone. Uh, these are with uh, sexual organs, so the gonads mainly, and then the prolactin is with the mammary glands. Um, on these, familiarize yourself with the names. Don't necessarily memorize the names, but the names will tell you kind of what they do. And kind of familiarize yourself with the abbreviation. So TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone. <clears throat> Uh, PRL is prolactin hormone, GH is growth hormone, ADH is antidiuretic hormone, and so forth, okay? So familiarize yourself with that. All right, so the organs themselves. You got your thyroid gland in front of the trachea, right below the Adam's apple. And the parathyroid glands are posterior, so on the back side of it. So in this picture on the right side of your screen, they've removed the spine so you could see through it. And there, there's a little uh, organs on the, on the thyroid hormone. Okay, so that's where they're located. Main things they do with this. So for the thyroid, uh, it's the T8, the thyroid hormone. And there's two types of them. There's a T3 and T4. Uh, T4 gets converted to T3, so we're just really going to worry about T3 at this point. Uh, these are um, what we call calorigenic ones. In other words, these are your, your metabolism ones. Um, these are going to produce heat because they're, they're going through a lot of chemical reactions. So when we say somebody has a high metabolism, most likely they're, they, they're producing a lot of T3 or more T3. People with lower metabolisms uh, aren't going to be producing as much. And then we've already mentioned the parathyroid hormone. Again, we secrete it in uh, response to hypocalcemia, in other words, low calcium levels. So if our calcium goes down, our parathyroid goes up. That's going to raise the calcium, which is going to lower the parathyroid. Yeah, neg that's a negative feedback system. <clears throat> so where do we get that? Remember uh, from the bones, the osteoclasts and osteoblasts, so that's what they're talking about here. Osteoclasts will be triggered to release that calcium. Your adrenal gland uh, sits superior on uh, to the kidney. And we've got different parts of it. Uh, there's the outside edge. And anytime you hear the term cortex, it's always talking about the outside edge. The medulla is going to be the middle of it. And there's different hormones released from, a, um, from the uh, adrenal cortex. And there's different ones for the adrenal uh, medulla. Excuse me. So for the cortex, all right. There's lots of steroids that are produced here, all right? We have three kind of main ones. You have mineral corticoids. These are your electrolytes, again, sodium, calcium, any kind of an ion as an electrolyte, chloride. Your glucocorticoids, so these are the ones that are going to uh, gluco for glucose. So these are going to be affecting the our glucose consumption, all right? And then we have what we call a, a adrenal cortical one. Yeah, excuse me, yeah. Um, now I'm drawing a blank. Our sex ones, these are going to help, uh, these are going to affect um, our, uh, our sexual development a little bit also. And sexual function on these. All right. That's from the cortex. Then you have the medulla. So this is the middle of it. This is what we normally think of when we think of the adrenal glands. Because this is where our, our epinephrine and norepinephrine is produced. I remember these are um, glucose. These inhibit insulin, so we're going to, when people who are stressed a lot, they have a lot of epinephrine, are going to and most likely end up being in a diabetic because they, they inhibit the insulin. <clears throat> but what it does is that it increases your heart rate, increases your breathing, increases sweating. Uh, it's going to uh, give energy to your major muscles at this point, okay? And again, we even kind of know what adrenaline does. And that's what we're talking about this. Epinephrine and norepinephrine, they're very similar to each other. I'm not going to worry about the differences in them. Uh, um, this is a kind of positive feedback loop, which means negative feedback loop, loop thing I was, I was telling you about. So as our blood glucose level goes up, so as we, get, we eat something, we get a lot of sugar in our system, our body's going to uh, go to the pancreas and tell it to produce insulin. All right. Uh, this is going to affect two different things. Um, Produces us to get make glycogen, 
So we store insulin in the liver or going to tell the cells to increase the uptake of uh, glucose. So what this does, so if we're taking our glucose and storing it in the liver or if our cells are using it, then the glucose level drops. As the glucose level drops, all right, so that's what it's telling you here, we signal our, to tell our uh, pancreas to stop producing insulin. When we stop producing the insulin, we don't have in the, uh, so we don't have, we have more glucose. Because the glucose levels are low, what happens is our body tells the liver then to take that glycogen that is stored, turn it back into glucose to raise our blood levels so that we'll increase our pancreas, uh, our insulin levels. That's, so that's a negative feedback. As one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. If this one's going down, then this one's going up. Negative feedback system. <clears throat> so here we are, go with those or, uh, uh, hormones again. The glucagon this is secreted uh, from the pancreas. All right, it's going to stimulate glucogenesis, in other words, the production of the uh, glucose. So it's releasing this into the system. This happens when we have low insulin levels. So again, it's going to increase the blood glucose. Now, as the blood glucose gets higher, or after we eat a meal, then our beta cells are going to promote the absorption. It's going to release the insulin and tell the cells to absorb the glucose or tell the liver to make glycogon. Remember, glycogon is just storing of the insulin for, or excuse me, the glucose for later use <clears throat> when we're not eating. And then it also does some somatostatin and some other peptides in here and a little bit of gastrin, and these are for... Um, digestion but i really want to focus on the glucagon and the insulin so know those two parts about the uh, uh, pancreas the glucagon for releasing glucose is from the alpha insulin is for storing it or using it and that's from the beta cells our gonads and ovaries uh, for the ovaries we're going to produce a lot of uh, estradiols progesterone and inhibin uh, and this uh, will affect our gender differentiation and our ability to reproduce. Uh, so there's also estrogen, estrogen in there, that's from the estradiol. Uh, test these will produce mainly testosterone, and again, this is going to affect the differentiation and the overall production and function of the male uh, reproductive organs. So these are controlled by hormones. Other tissues that have hormones, our skin has some, uh, helps us with uh, our calcium regulation. We can't absorb calcium without vitamin D, and we'll get vitamin D from our, sun, our, uh, our skin being exposed to sun, or if we take vitamin D uh, artificially or from something that's been fortified. Our liver produces um, a few hormones, actually quite a few, but we're just going to talk about a couple, angiotensinogen. This is going to, uh, the angiotensinogen will, be, will affect uh, blood pressure. Uh, hepcidin um, affects blood clotting. The heart, it makes the uh, atrial nitrate, natrior, uh, natriurite, excuse me, sorry, nitriuretic peptide, uh, going to affect sodium. That's what the natriurite comes from and it's going to lower blood pressure. Our stomach produces a few of them here. Gastrin, this is for digestion. Uh, it also releases ghrelin, which is going to tell us that we want to eat. Um, are the fat in our tissues releases a hormone also called leptin, and leptin is a long-term one that tells us we don't need to eat. So we have different hormones. And all kinds of hormones affect your metabolism. Your metabolism is all your chemical reactions. So hormones play a big role in this and different levels of them will do different things uh, with hormones. Um, again, familiarize yourself with the organs and the major uh, hormones that we did talk about on here. Uh, be familiarized with the abbreviations so that, because the, the names of these will tell you a lot of times what they're doing. All right. That's it for this one. Uh, have a